Today on The Hookup, I'm going to show you how to let your smart home adapt to your busy and ever-changing schedule by integrating Google Calendar into your automations. My wife is a planner, and an awesome one at that. Our shared Google Calendar is always accurate and up-to-date, and knowing that really takes a lot of stress out of my life. Unfortunately, based on the events on the calendar, I often find myself needing to manually switch automations on or off, which sounds like the opposite of automation to me. In this video, I'm going to show you two different ways to integrate Google Calendar with your smart home. First, through a simple web service like IFTTT, and then as a component in Home Assistant. The easiest way to allow your smart home to interact with your Google Calendar is with the IFT web service. If you've never heard of IFT, First of all, congratulations on living under a rock for the last four years. And second, IFT or IFTTT is a web service that allows you to write simple if this then that integrations for many of your cloud-based products. After simply signing into your Google account and granting it access to IFT, your Google Calendar events can be used as either if triggers or then responses in IFT. And you can pair them with other cloud services that are already supported by the platform. Some of the notable integrations already supported by IFT are Samsung SmartThings, Wink Hub, and the Tuya Smart App. The setup process for IFT is extremely straightforward, and that's ultimately why IFT is so popular. That being said, it is a web service, and in all honesty, my experience with it hasn't been great. I found it to be slow to respond and not super reliable. If you've only got a few automations and those automations are non-critical, then IFT will probably work out just fine for you. But if you're getting serious about home automation, there are definitely better ways. Specifically, Home Assistant integration with Google Calendar is not only powerful, but it's pretty simple and well documented. To add your Google Calendar to Home Assistant, you'll first need to head over to the Google Developers Console while logged into the Google account that you want to integrate. You'll be presented with a setup wizard that will step you through all the consent screens that you'll need to obtain your OAuth credentials. But you don't need to finish the whole wizard. When you get to the question that starts asking you about which API you'll be using, you can just go ahead and click Cancel. Then under APIs and Services, select Credentials and then click on the tab OAuth Consent Screen. On this screen, you'll enter a descriptive product name for this credential. Home Assistant works well, but you can call it anything you'd like. Then go ahead and click Save. Next, click Create Credentials, OAuth Client ID, set the application type to Other, and give it a specific name for that credential. Again, Home Assistant works fine here. Then click Create, and it will generate a client ID and a secret for you. At this point, you'll want to go to your configuration.yaml file and create an entry called Google with the values Client ID and Client Secret. Copy and paste the Client ID and Client Secret into your configuration.yaml file, or better yet, you can use a secrets.yaml file for these values. Save, but don't restart your Home Assistant yet. Go back to the Google Developers Console and search for Calendar, and then select Google Calendar API. On the next screen that pops up, just click Enable, and then you're all set. Now when you restart Home Assistant, you'll see a new file show up in your config folder called googlecalendars.yaml. And that file will have separate listings for each calendar that you've created for yourself or has been shared with you. For me, I was only interested in adding a sensor to two of my calendars, so under the rest of the calendars, I changed the value from track true to track false. I also added a value called name to make the calendar names a bit more user friendly. When you're all finished with that setup, hit save and then restart Home Assistant again. When Home Assistant comes back up, you should see all of your tracked calendars under the States tab in Home Assistant. And then all that's left to do is automate. I do all of my automations in Node Red, so let's take a quick look at what I've done with that. A quick side note before we begin, there is a Node Red palette that allows Node Red to directly support Google Calendar, but the nodes are not being actively maintained and I was not able to make the direct Google Calendar integration work. I suspect this is because it relies on the Google Plus API, which was recently marked end of life by Google. Thankfully, the Home Assistant integration works perfectly and it relies only on the Google Calendar API. And we know Node Red and Home Assistant play nice together. The two main automations that I'm modifying with my Google Calendar are my sunrise alarm clock and my daughter's RGB alarm clock. The sunrise integration is simple enough. I just added a Home Assistant current states node to the middle of the flow to check if the day is marked as school or non-school in the calendar. 
The part of the message that contains that information is specifically message.data.attributes.message, which I know sounds confusing, but it just comes from the JSON object that's generated by Home Assistant. If that particular value comes back as non-school, it blocks the flow and prevents the sunrise from starting, so I can sleep in a bit on my days off. My daughter's schedules are a bit different. On weekdays, she has 10 minutes in between her start waking up, start getting dressed, and go downstairs lights. So I'm utilizing a trigger node to send the next color after a set amount of time, in this case 10 minutes. The light scheduler node triggers every day for non-school days before checking the calendar to confirm the schedule. This means that long breaks like spring break and winter break that contain all the days will automatically switch. The school light scheduler is only for weekdays since we won't have any surprise school days on the weekend. But it'll also check the Google Calendar with the current state node in Home Assistant to make sure that it won't wake up my daughter on any non-school day. Another useful change you could make to these flows would be to use the contains flag in the switch node instead of the equals flag. That would allow you to parse events to look for a single word rather than having to have the entire string be exact. In other words, the event doesn't need to be called exactly non-school. It could be called non-school winter break. Because it still contains the word non-school, it would work in the automation. As you can see, the integrations that you can make in Home Assistant are significantly more powerful than what you can do with IFT. But they do come with a bit more setup. Either way, I hope this video gave you some ideas on how to add Google Calendar to your automations. If you're using Google Calendar in a different way that's working well for you, let me know down in the description. Thank you so much to my awesome patrons over at Patreon for your continued support of my channel. If you're interested in supporting my channel, check out the links down in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching The Hookup.